Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about looking at Renko, Cavalier, and Delstar with Adrian, our local Detroit expert, and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Before we get to that day, I started actually the week by taking a look at some of the existing wiring in the ceiling of the wheelhouse in Renko. One of the next sort of reasonably important jobs for me is getting all the nav lights up and running again. So I really need to find out where all that old wiring ran. The old nav lights were here. The old install of the VHF radio is rusted out as well. But what I'm doing today, nav lights came along and then in through here. So my plan is actually to take this panel out here thinking I might eventually take these two centre ones to have a look what happens where the mast goes up and the edge one here. I'm going to have to break these planks to get them out. I'm going to have to cut them and pry them out. They're nailed in, you know, it's not going to be easy. But I'm going to replace them with a very different colour, like a darker wood. I think if you can't find the exact same colour, you're better off having something contrasting, particularly if it's symmetrical, you know, it's just the two edges and the centre, uh, than you are having something that almost matches. That's my personal philosophy on it anyway. Alright, so it looks like this is the male half of the tongue and groove. Alright, so we got some insulation in here too, which is kind of good, but also going to make our life a little bit harder. I think once we get this board out, We'll be able to pull the insulation down and see where the wiring comes through and then down. I think it comes down behind here. We should be able to attach the new wires and pull it through. To do that, I'm going to cut the tongue, I think, off this entire board and then see if we can pull it down. So this is the starboard light coming through here. Guessing this probably goes over to be the port light, given they're grouped together. Uh, and then maybe masthead, the horn is on the roof too. So I think we just need to start tracing them. Now, all those wires come down. They all come down to here. So, We've got the lengths, I cut them off because I wasn't using them, didn't know where they went. But we've got the ends here. And then we have up there and then onto the roof itself. So we need to pull some new ones through. I don't really want to use these old wires. We could, but I'm not particularly keen. I'd rather refresh them with something of a known quality. We've got the mast up here. Obviously wires going up for a, you know, stern light mast headlight, anchor light. Now we've also got these wires here, not sure where they are, so I'm going to take the two centre ones out as well. And then we have these wires, so I think I'll take yeah, two edge, two centre. Before I could get too far into that wiring, I had to take the boat back up to Coast Marine. We had always planned to have another look at the alignment by using a metal version of the Polyflex coupling to do the alignment but we didn't have one yet. So we now have that, and so I took that boat up. Turned out the guys got stuck on another job, so I actually had to go back and get the boat again so I could take it back for when Adrian arrived. It's probably worth talking a little bit about maneuvering these types of boats. I've just untied from this pen we're in after uh, having it here at Coast Marine. Um, you can see it's already drifting back a little bit and the stern's coming to port, and that's kind of what we want. We've got more room over here to turn around, and also, boats turn better one way than the other, and I'll explain why in a second. But you can see here, we're already sort of facing this way. I would have actually gone to starboard and gone ahead a little bit to kick the back out, but it's kind of happening anyway, so... Often, I think, with boats, the trick is not to fight it. If it wants to go a certain way, and that's a viable option, just do it.
I'm not sure if that really showed up on camera, but the idea there is because we're turning to starboard, which is the way this prop turns, a starboard prop, we could have full starboard rudder on, be turning, run out of room, heading towards another boat, keep starboard prop on, go astern, and the stern will actually kick to port because of the transverse um, prop, you know, action, the prop walk. Now, sorry, just look if someone's coming, that's the other big thing, coming out of a channel like this, it could be someone coming along, like on the road, you know. Yes, it's quiet, but these things can happen. Now, with an outboard, if you had full starboard helm on and went astern, the back of the boat, the stern of the boat, would go to starboard. But with this, it won't start going to starboard until there's a fair bit of momentum, a bit of speed, and a bit of water running over the prop. So you end up in this situation where you can keep that starboard helm on, go ahead, have the, you know, the bow go to starboard, the stern go to port, go astern, actually have the stern go to port again, then go forward and you're on your way like we were then. Just a, a technique for a single screw rudder boat. If that's the sort of thing you guys are interested in hearing more about, we can definitely talk a lot more about it, find somewhere quiet, um, maybe even try and get some aerial shots and sort of narrate as you see it happening. That might be a better way to explain it. Once we're back, headed over to where Cavalier was, where Adrian was already down in the engine room, his uh, native habitat. Give you a bit of an idea how much uh, bigger Cavalier is than Renko. It's pretty much kind of 40 tonne compared to 10 tonne, displacement wise. Dell Star's just over here, pretty much the same size as Renko, lengthwise. motorcycle has to scavenge right okay so it doesn't scavenge in the sump using the piston pressure it scavenges using the, blo the the blower right okay so it'll always need the blower so if that blower drive shaft snaps at the back or strips the boom it'll just stop right it won't go it'll, you'll sit there and crank it and it'll belt black smoke out the back and you'll be going oh, what's fucking wrong <laughs> you'll ring me up and go what's wrong and I'll go, oh you're probably gonna blow a drive shaft oh. No, I reckon that's one of the best, like one of the most important spares to carry too, isn't it? Just a little yeah. blower drive shaft on board. Yep. And <coughs> look, this one, oh, yeah, it's got nothing hanging off the back. Don't even behind that cover. And it's a pretty easy swap, isn't it? Yeah. It's probably. You want it? Yeah. It's, part, it's, just, it's, it's just odd that they keep ringing. <laughs> Don't be Rob. Oh, no, no, it's Phil next door. <laughs> we'll get Adrian down there. Looks pretty clean in there, mate. It's cleaner than mine. Not too bad. Yeah. It's sort of Yeah, right. Definitely an early built engine because of that set head bolt. They did away with those from fucking over years ago. Mm. That's alright. This one over there, Mort? No, no, that's alright. I'm just yeah. going to get this little clip off here. There we go. Rods or? Yeah, just the racks there. Yeah. And are they meant to be loose or are they meant to be tight? Should be, should be tight. And if they're loose, what does it do? Oh, I just this one's getting dead hard, full fuel. This one's just a little bit. They're all the rest of them just a little bit off, full fuel. Like oh, yeah. yeah. It's not, but it makes a difference. At the end of the day, it does make a difference, yes. <sighs> well, that's not, that's not too bad. There's a little bit of wear in the rockers. Yeah. Which is usual, probably for something of its age and whatever. But, um, it should, it's not, what do you call it? Oh, fuck, that look good. That's out of my tool play. A few bits out of your motor, oh, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it, mate. It's all good. <laughs> Fuck, where did they come from? <laughs> <laughs> he might know. <laughs> Just hide them. 
But if you drop it in the bilge, you're going in after it. Keep going. It'll go sloppy when it comes out. Oh, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you haven't got that on camera, have you? That's staying in, mate. <laughs> That's staying in. <laughs> Come on, baby. What are you doing with it? <laughs> Yeah, what do you want me to do with it? I watched you do it. I watched you do it. Sit along and then just lift the rocker cover up. Tough. Oh, he's wrecked the rocker cover. Oh, bullshit. Yeah, I see there's like a sponge back in there. Yeah, there's a pad there, so it doesn't sort of get to breathe properly. The oil just just chuck it over there, so I'm going to chuck it on top of your fuel filter. You're right. That one's getting there. When you say getting there? Well, oh, it's getting, starting to get a bit too much movement in it. See the, you watch the rocker, this part, yeah, the yeah. centre of the rocker and the outside. Oh yeah, okay. It's not, it's not stupidly bad yet, but okay. it's, it's at the end of its life. So the movement between this part and that part? Is yeah. That what you're saying? So what that, what, what'll happen when the injector's going up and down, Yep. The timing constantly changes. It doesn't gotcha. st doesn't stay consistent. Yeah. That's probably why I'm getting um, variation in my RPMs. No, no, it shouldn't be. No, that won't. It won't. That Same one. as that one. That one. Yeah. That's... And that's like, is there a bushing in there or something? Or yeah, there or? is a bushing. You can look. You can rebush them and yeah. do them. And I've got all the tools to do them. But, but you by don't the do it. But the time you spend doing them, yeah, they're a hundred dollars each. By the yeah. time you spend yeah. a day rebushing the set, yeah. you've done your don't you know anyway? Yeah. So just going back a little bit, so with the governor, um, you shim it with one spring, and then if you get to a limit, you just swap out to a different spring, spring is yeah, that right? Spring with okay. different tension, yeah. yeah. The, the springs do it, um, a tall curve like or, and a rev yeah. range, so yeah. they'll do from zero to uh, 1500, or I think it's probably 1800, and then you can shim that up a little bit more mm -hmm. to get a bit, mm -hmm. but then you're, you're getting too much for the spring it won't compress anymore so then yep. you change the different springs Spring, the right tension. okay so the shims your fine adjustment the springs your coarse adjustment yeah yeah gotcha yep. mm, um, very so, good yeah. so really the um where i'm sort of hitting at the moment adrian is that the the big thing is this um problem it's had from gecko which has been the um this uh, manifold yep so we get another, get another manifold and then yeah because it's got a piece broken out the back, back of it yeah yeah, I'll have to get a shot of that afterwards. A yeah. whole lot like that there. Yeah. And it's all and the manifold's not sitting square. So I don't know if there's a billow in here, it's a flex. See, and it, hopefully it's not that's maybe why it's ended up down there, because someone's put it all together and it's all loaded up and pushing down too. So when mm. we put it pull it all apart, we need to have a look, make sure this is all not loading down on the manifold too. Right, okay. So um, and maybe you might have to put a support under it so it doesn't. Like you could probably put one off the bottom here onto the bottom of the elbow. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Like when you say support, like weld an actual bar into it. Yeah, just put a foot. Yep. It does, well, it doesn't. You could put a socket there so that you can put a piece of tube, slip it inside it so it can't jump out and it just pushes down. And you can be able to, with a threaded foot so you can screw the foot out. You can get just a little bit of weight on it so it's not. Yes. A little acropops yes. sort of thing. Yeah, 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 just so it's not going to. Um, yeah. yeah. Let, let this push down on the manifold and that. So, um, Adrian, what age you put this at? Would like the boat was built in seventy five. Oh, it's, a, it's an early. It's an early. It's, it's been early ninety two. It's definitely an early ninety two with the number on the side of the block. Yeah, where it is. And yeah. And how, the website, if you look the serial number up, uh, it'll tell you the. Tell you yeah, you can get the yeah. exact year. Yeah. Oh, my serial oh, number for my engine's like 1960 or something ridiculous. Like right. it's, it's quite old. Sure bag. In my little, in up there, yep. there's, a, there's a there's a pillowcase. It's got a little book in it. I think it's got dated serial numbers in it. Oh, okay. Where'd you find the book? In some little bloody bookshop. No, no, I got it. I have had it for years. Like, oh, I think. Someone else who was used to be into Detroit gave up and. Um... There's some guy up the mountain who's meant to be riding to his Detroit's too. I don't know. Neil Hass was telling me about mm, it. Okay. 
definitely got their enthusiasts around, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. They've got to be a great old motor, I mean. Hmm. What would they say, 95% of landing craft at D-Day were Detroit's? Yeah, that's right, 671. Yeah. yeah. The free world owes itself to Detroit it diesel. It does. For you, yep. 471 mm -hmm. at 16 degrees holds with a shallow sun. Oh, yep. 15 quarts. Right, so it could be way over. Mm. 20 litres is like a quart slightly less than a litre. Yeah. So I could be like five, six litres over. Could be, yeah. Well, that's the reason. I hope oh. so. I hope and that's with all a it deep is. sum. Yeah. At 30 degrees, yeah. 14 quarts. Wow. Um, My suction pump's died too. I might go to auto one and buy a new suction pump. <laughs> oh, really? I've got one. I've got one on Dillstar. Oh, cool. Yep. So part number for the sum and how much it takes. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Very good. Uh, yeah. So where would the part number be printed on it? It'll be stamped on it. Yeah. Okay. It'll be stamped. It'll be round the edge of it somewhere. Okay. I can see it. I can get in there and have a look. Yeah. Can't take it off, but I can have a look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it should be out there. All right, that's awesome. Thank you, Adrian. When we finished looking at Cavalier, we went over to Delstar in Renko. I had been talking to Adrian about a few problems I was having in Renko. It was blowing a bit of oil out of the breather hose and the exhaust a little bit, and he was saying a few things that could cause it. One of the things I think you might have already seen where he's asking me to find out what size, what type of oil pan I've got on it, what part number for the oil pan I have. He said, look, could be over full with oil, too much oil. Uh, and we ended up looking at breather issues as well. Apart from that, she just runs like a little gem. Yeah, they're a pretty trouble-free little thing. Yeah. So what do we have to do? Pump off, put it on the bench. I'll have to get Neil to strip it for me and fucking... Done. Oh, yeah. Is that an easy get off now? Oh. Shouldn't be too bad. Probably want to get it on some timer marks, I guess, but... Um, I don't know if I'm getting off now. I actually quite like the little boarding ladder on Delstar. Just on the transom there permanently. Good sort of safety feature if someone goes overboard on their own without the removable swim ladder deployed, you know. Kind of like that. While Adrian was taking the injector pump off the Perkins in Delstar, I just started making sure that the breather on the Detroit rocker cover wasn't blocked at all. The whole thing comes off. I think that'll be not even vaguely crazy. blocked, it's pretty clean. Yeah. And then there's just some spaces. Spaces go there, so this doesn't go hard against it. Hmm. Because I had a few things happening with Renko that I wasn't happy with, Adrian, Dave, and I went for a run in Renko uh, before we went out to Delstar. Now, I didn't film it because I was sort of busy chatting to him about it, but a few things came up. Probably the most noticeable thing was I had a lot of oil coming out of the airbox drain. And he was saying, look, that shouldn't happen. It's a rebuilt motor, rebuilt blower. You know, that happens when a motor's really tired. And it's not, it's, it's been rebuilt. So what he did is he put his fingers over here, these breathers, and said, couldn't feel anything. So I went off and checked those. Then, I don't know if I can get this camera in there. Hang on, let me try and turn. Don't know if that's gonna show up or not, but you can see there's a lot of silicon in the hole here that's migrated when this part's been put on. So we need to take this off, clean that silicon out, and put it back up. He thinks that perhaps because this breather is completely free, that it's actually a restriction here and at the other end that's causing the problem. What Adrian did in the meantime though, while we're on our run, is cable tie the filler cap open. Once we did that, we actually gained about another 
250 RPM at the top end. I think it maxed out about 1500 uh, when I did that sort of little speed run in a previous video. It went up to 1750 when we're on our run. And I think he said he had limited it under no load to 1850. So he said 100 below with load is kind of about right. So we, you know, definitely seem to have a problem in the area of crankcase breathing. So something else to tweak when we get the boat back. At the moment, I'm about to take it back up to Coast Marine for the uh, alignment to be fine tuned. So more on that soon too. We eventually got back onto Cavalier again and then we took Cavalier for a run and really sort of gave it the beans. Adrian wanted to see what it was doing at full throttle, at full RPM. You could see just then it was blowing a bit of smoke at full RPM, as was Renko, but then Cavalier started to lose power. So when we got back to the mooring where Renko was sitting, we jumped back in the engine room and started looking through the fuel system. main fuel line comes in there from the tank. That's where it comes through that pipe. Was it the fitting again? Was it, oh, look at that, nasty. Well, that's where the fuel goes into the filter bowl through that. Yeah. That's manky. No wonder it don't want to go. Yeah. yeah. So you need to get, start that and then give it a good resin. Right, so get those, take the valves out, just have a drain. Yep, and yeah, just yep. leave them wide open with a hose on them and just then get into it. Get into yeah, it, okay. yeah. And it'll probably blow shit out of there, trust me. Right. But, it, but it'll, yeah. come good. it'll come It'll do a good, yeah. yeah. It might stop some of the, 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 soot you, the soot you're seeing blowing out of the exhaust when you're going along. Okay, it'll yeah, right. Back into here. Nice. It, well, that, well it'll, the, the oil won't be getting all stuck on the piston. It'll be getting out of there where it's supposed to be going. Right, okay. And you can just go in some sort of catch can or something? Yeah, you can put a catch can. But, but eventually, once you shouldn't need one eventually, unless the engine's right. really tired. Right, gotcha. You know what I mean? Yep. These are Dave's fuel filters. Been about a year, I think he said. But looks like he's going to have to drain all the tanks. They're full, about 3,000 litres. Probably polish the fuel out into an IBC, clean the tanks, polish it on the way back into. At the end there, Adrian was talking about some valves that were in the airbox drains on Cavalier's Detroit. Now, the engine in Cavalier is a naturally aspirated 892. And those valves apparently are only used on turbo engines. So it seems as though that block has come from an engine that was previously turbocharged or whatever, and they shouldn't be there. So sorry this video was a little bit late this week. I was actually powering into the awning for the back of Renko, and I was planning to make that this week's video, and I just didn't get it finished in time. Then I looked through this footage that I'd taken early in the week and thought, oh, you know what? I'll just make that a video. So in some ways it was a blessing in disguise because when I looked back, it's always interesting talking to Adrian. So I'm glad I, you know, did film it all. I'll show you the awning. So this is it. I've cleared this area a little bit. Um, it's getting there. Uh, still needs more aluminium down here to go in. All right, well, take care. Thanks for watching. I'm going to push on with this awning this week and next time I see you, we'll be installing that on the boat. Should have called you Shadow. One, two, three in a row. Come on. <laughs> Stop. Keep coming. <laughs> if your leg looks bad, normally it looks terrible going downstairs. Come on. <laughs> You're not good at stairs, are you, Daffy? Interesting Daisy was with them, but she seems to prefer to go around under the house. I don't know if she's tall enough for stairs. All right, wait there. Come on, Dottie. Come on, more stairs. Daisy, <laughs> she comes. Come on, catch up. You think the others would go the same way she does, given how well they do stairs? Oh, yes, breakfast. Sit, beg. 
I'm on Daisy. You doing well? Sprinkle them. <laughs> Do you want to get a bit closer, Daffy? Here you go, Daisy. Have your own. They won't notice. Well done. There you go. Few more. That's enough. You find your own stuff now. <laughs> I got some more awning to make. Oi, leave her alone. are in. They seem to sort of eat the medium as well. It must be something the worms can eat. What's that? That looks like more. All right. Have a good day.